Lawrence Kotlikoff, economics professor at Boston University. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. It's great to, to be with you and great to be in Russia. So you're the one who states that America is broke and is even in a worse state than Greece and Ireland. How so? What, what, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, we economists look at all the bills the government has to pay. And, and uh, in the U.S. case, we have enormous bills that have been kept off the books that are not official debts, but they're very real. For example, paying me my social, social security benefits, my old age pension, that's a real obligation. It's not part of official government debt, but it's you know, very important because there are 78 million baby boomers who are gonna get these uh, social security payments and in addition, medical payments from the government. If you uh, look at all those payments, they're about $3 trillion a year. So we have these huge bills. Nobody has thought about paying for them. And Congress and the presidents over the years have just focused on official debt and basically have not told the public about these big bills. You said the amount of the fiscal gap in the United States is in your estimation, $222 trillion, is this right? It's $222 trillion, if you right. take... This is like an astonishing number, which is like three times the world's GDP. This is, this is more than what the world makes. 20 times higher than the official debt uh, in the hands of the public, which is $11 trillion. So if you add all these spending obligations into the distant future, and you compare them with all the taxes, and you include in the spending all the... Uh, interest payments and principal payments on the debt, on the official debt, you have $222 trillion in present value. Now this is 12% of GDP on an ongoing basis. In other words, we need to get 12% more of GDP either in tax increases or spending cuts in order to have the fiscal gap be zero. We're doing far too little too late. It's. Uh, it's like operating on a person with cancer and you say, well, there's a big tumor here. We're just going to take a little bit out today and we'll come back in, a, in five years and we'll take out some more. But maybe in five years the patient is dead because the, the tumor got bigger. So this is why we are, are, are in worse shape than Greece. And Greece is about 10% of GDP they need on an ongoing basis. We need 12%. Italy, it's about 5%. Germany, it's about 5%. So when you look at it from this perspective, it's a whole different story than when you look just at the official debt. Because these governments are making choices, word choices, about what to call official obligations and what to call unofficial. So are they intentionally hiding the They're enormity of the problem? They're intentionally hiding this. They've been spending, in our country, six decades running a massive Ponzi scheme, taking from young people giving to old people, and then telling the young people, don't worry, you'll get yours when you're old. Promising pensions, promising health care benefits. And, you know, this is happening in all countries. Even Russia has a pension system. But it doesn't seem to be uh, in as bad a sh uh, shape as ours in terms of paying for its benefits in the future. But, I mean, this number, $222 trillion, I mean, who is, what exactly is this, where is this money going? Who is spending it? I mean, certainly not the average American. What is it like the 1% of the super rich, the military needs? What is, where is it going? Where is, it, where is it all the spending? Yeah. Uh, well, you have, again, a uh, very big, you've got uh, a lot of old people now. They're getting very high benefits, about $30,000 per person. It's scheduled to go up to about 40,000 when I retire, which will be about 15 years. So you can see that um, we're just very generous to the old people in our country. What do you suggest, like cut spending, raise taxes? That would be suicidal to any American president. Well, we have to uh, be adults. If we're running the country, we have to act like adults because our main responsibility as adults is to make sure our kids have a good future. So we have to reduce the growth rate of the benefits to the elderly. And that requires cutting uh, the growth, you know, being much more uh, careful about how much we spend on health care because it's been, uh, the health care benefits have been growing at 
twice the growth rate of per capita GDP for 40 years. These are the government health care benefits for the elderly. So it, it can't continue because it's going to kill the, the country. So we have a huge problem. It's being hidden. It's not being described and discussed, disclosed. And uh, we're in very bad shape. You just mentioned that you need to take care of the future generations. Clash of generations is the term you use to describe right. what future awaits for American children paying up the deaths of their fathers. But the United States, when you look at it, it really has lived on death ever since World War II, and increasingly so in the past 30 years. And they have somehow managed not to collapse, you know, and mm, they have that, no problem getting new deaths. Why do you think that the new generation won't be able to manage it? Well, uh, over time, the uh, official debt will become bigger and bigger as a share of GDP. And at some point, the Chinese and other people will stop lending us money. And our interest rates will go up dramatically. We'll have a, a bond market collapse. And at that point, the, the deficit will get even bigger. The debt, the official debt will accumulate even more rapidly. And our government is also printing a lot of money to pay for these bills. So inflation can also take off very quickly. So I see big problems, and they may not be in 30 years, they may be in five years or two years, that the uh, Chinese and other people start to understand how bad the situation is. And then we'll be in the situation of Greece, where people won't lend us money. And then we will have to make big cuts, and uh, everybody will be injured. So, You mentioned China, and I know that China right. and Japan are, they top the list of America's lenders. I think right. it's over one trillion U.S. deaths. Should they just get used to the idea they're not getting their money back? I mean, they can't just come out and say, hey, I want part of the American GDP. Well, if I were uh, anybody, whether I was Chinese or Japanese or Russian, I would not be buying 30-year U.S. government treasury bonds that are yielding three and a half percent or something right now because the prospects for us to print, we have printed so much money since 2007, it's really unbelievable. We have, the Federal Reserve has tripled the, what's called the base money, the money, the basic money supply, it's called the monetary base. It's actually gone from about $800 billion to about $3 trillion now. And so, almost more than tripled. So. We have the basis in place for a more than tripling of the price level right now. We have created the, uh, the foundation for hyperinflation already, and the baby boomers have yet to retire. So right now, 12% uh, percent of all the federal spending is, based, is being financed, paid for by just printing new dollars. That's what's going on. So we're acting very much like a developing country in terms of our actual finances. And I've been uh, co concerned about this and writing about it and speaking about it for since the uh, late 80s. But, and other economists have as well, and, pol and also some politicians, but it's getting worse. It's not like anybody is actually uh, looking carefully at these numbers. The politicians are looking at the official debt numbers and not really discussing the magnitude of what's coming. You know, a lot of people who think like you, who are critical of the current American financial system, have come out on the street in the Occupy Wall Street movement and they've voiced their concerns and their protests. Do you right. think a movement like this is actually capable or able to solve real issues or is it just a red herring? Well, Occupy Wall Street was concerned about inequality and they were concerned about what Wall Street was actually doing. And I think we need to radically change our financial system because we have two big problems. And this is true in every country, including Russia. The traditional banking system, the model is one of very high leverage. Banks borrow a lot of money, promise to repay. And then there's opacity. They, they take the money and they do something with it, but they don't tell you what they're doing with it. So people get very concerned at some points about whether the banks actually can repay. And then you can have runs on the bank just overnight. So it's a very um, unstable situation when you promise people things and then you don't show what you're doing with their money. And then 
And that's what happened in, uh, with Lehman Brothers and Bear Stearns and uh, Merrill Lynch and all these companies that went, went under, one after the other, everybody started worrying because they couldn't see the assets. So what we need to do is uh, get rid of this faith-based banking. We need to have uh, uh, no leverage and we have to have transparency. The government has to disclose what the assets are. The government has to do verification and disclosure. We should have the government agency verify that somebody's mortgage is actually um, a reasonable mortgage, that uh, that person has a job, that person has an income, that person's house, which is collateral to the mortgage, actually has this value. So we should not have any liar loans. And then we should also have all the, uh, the banks be, become what are called mutual funds, which just sh sell shares to uh, these funds. So they, they take in all the money on an equity basis. They don't borrow money, they just sell shares of stock. The money comes in and then they buy these disclosed assets, the mortgages for example. And then if you have equity-based finance, then if the mortgages don't work out, somebody doesn't repay, the shareholders take a loss, but the um, financial intermediary, which is a mutual fund, never fails, it never goes bankrupt. So you have a banking system that can never fail. If it's made out of equity financed mutual funds who are buying transparent, fully disclosed assets, that's what we need. But and that's what they, you know, the protesters of Wall Street didn't know what they wanted, but this is really what they need, what they wanted. Now, what we need is also protesters among the young about their fiscal treatment. That's a different thing. That's the thing, the fiscal cliff and the possibility of America defaulting that we hear a lot around us. Is right. this a symptomatic agony or is it maybe artificial political crisis? I think p young people don't fully understand how bad they're being treated in the, um, in the debates, in the entire campaign. Not, a sing not one of these two candidates talked about the magnitude of the problem. President Obama said that our social security system, our, our basic government pension system has a small problem, it needs to be tweaked, is what he said. Well, if you actually look at the, um, the system, at the trustees report, the thing is 31% underfinanced. So it's not a small problem, according even to the social security actuaries, it's a huge problem. So, you know, he's on a different planet from the reality. Uh, Romney uh, felt that uh, we could just lower taxes and get more revenue. So he was equally, uh, you know, crazy on this stuff. And unfortunately, uh, we have children whose futures are at stake here. And they're also under a lot of pressure on, in other ways because they're competing with a lot of people all over the world, and they're also competing with these new smart, smart machines that are taking people's jobs away. So in our country, when you go to a, uh, a grocery store or a drug store, the checkout per person is a machine. There's nobody working there. It's just a machine these days. There's actually maybe one person to help you use the machine. And so that's replaced lots of jobs. So we have young people uh, who are, are having trouble finding jobs. Even uh, college graduates are having trouble. Lawrence Kotlikov, thank you very much for a very interesting insight that you gave us on the ongoing financial crisis. And it's great to have you with us again. My pleasure. Thank you.